this is Kelly Feller. I'm coming to you from IDF here in Shanghai, China. And I have with me today Ram Petabola, who is the director of the Open Source Technology Center for Intel. Welcome, Ram. I'm glad you could join me. Thanks. Hi there, so it's just going to be a casual conversation, so thanks for taking time. Yeah, great to be here. Great. So first of all, I always get this question. Intel is a hardware company. What the heck? Why are you doing anything in open source and what do you do? Intel's actually been a, a, a very long-standing participant in the open source community. I mean, uh, we, Intel in general does a lot of software work, uh, and we've actually been with open source pretty much from day one. Um, we do a lot of work in the Linux kernel community to really enable the technologies and, and, and bring them to market through the, through, through the Linux vendors and, and the different open source uh, uh, vendors that, that have the key application uh, uh, components that go into the stack. But at the end of the day, what Intel's trying to do is make sure that the stuff that we're putting into these platforms really gets kind of manifested and be available to the end user. That's really why we do open source. Okay. And open source is a, is a nice way for us to do it because we have a lot of Linux talent. We have uh, a lot of engineers who work in our team who directly work on the Linux kernel, who directly work on the open source projects. Oh, wow. And we can really implement, uh, implement some of these technologies and bring value to our customers. Oh, cool. So you mentioned open source projects. Can you give us an idea of specific open source projects you're working on? Sure. Is that super secret information? Oh, no, not at all. This is, this is open source. Uh, uh, hey, yeah, it's, all right. It's, it's probably available. So. Um, we actually do a lot of work that really spans the full spectrum of computing. We do um, a lot of work in the high-end data center, all the feature functionalities that needed to implement, let's say, virtualization. It's a very big area that we focus on. Oh, okay. Um, we do a lot of work on power management. Uh, we, this uh, may or may not be well known, but Intel has uh, some of the strongest power management expertise in the in the Linux community, and we do a lot of work on uh, really enhancing the the, the 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 technology within the kernel and around the kernel to reduce power. So mm -hmm. not only are we doing stuff in our hardware, we really are make aggressively ensuring that the software plays along with the hardware so that the overall power consumption is low. Wow. Okay. Um, so we, we do um, um, stuff in virtualization and power management as I talked about in the data center, but we also do a lot of work on the on the client side. So, I mean, MIDs are kind of talk of the town uh, here in, in, in Shanghai. Right. Um, and we do, uh, we do uh, a lot of work there. We, we have mobile and mobile.org, which is our kind of the flagship project that we have to go enable the functionality that's needed mm -hmm. to really implement the full internet capability. MIDs are about uh, uh, bringing the full internet to your pocket. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you think of the Atom processor lineup uh, as the, kind of the hardware underpinning brings that capability. Right. Mobile is a software complement to it that brings all of the software components that come to the party and, and really give you that complete experience. That's really what I'm Great, yeah. Um, in the keynote today, they talked a lot about the various different yep. organizations who are coming and supporting mobile. Yep. That's terrific. So for other software developers who might be interested in getting involved with some of the projects like mobile that you're working on, what is one of the steps that they can take to do that? I think the is first the website? Thing, or yeah, or? the first thing to do is just go to the website. Okay. Uh, all of Intel projects are really available. Uh, this is just true open source work. Um, they're all available on, uh, on their own websites. Mm -hmm. we, for virtualization, we work on uh, the same community projects in the Linux kernel, the project KVM. Mm -hmm. For less watts, it's actually less watts.org, you know, you know, right now, mobile is the same thing, mobile.org. Um, we do, I mean, we, we have a lot of things there to help the developer kind of participate and, and contribute. Um, there is, uh, in a traditional... Can you other tools and things? Oh, or? absolutely. Okay. In, in very traditional sense, there's a lot of mailing lists, there's IRC chat, there's lots of ways to kind of scan the code. Oh, great, and get, great. There's task lists or project lists that you can sign up on. I would assume there's a vibrant community. Inside. Oh, absolutely. This is, mo they're, they're really the fundamental underpinning of mobile is to create the community that's going to drive this technology forward. Okay. I mean, this is not so much... Uh, uh, big Intel saying, hey, this is exactly what we're going to do. We right. have uh, 50 engineers that are going to write the code, spit it out. It's, it's really not that. Okay. Uh, it's about, everyone loves that. <laughs> oh, no. We have a long experience <laughs> of, of, of learning from that. Right. This is truly about kind of creating that vibrant community that kind of believes in uh, kind of playing with these kind of devices and bringing the right compelling software. Mm -hmm. uh, and we are contributing our own engineering to it, but we're doing it in a very much of an open source fashion where uh, the community comes together. And, and drives the technology forward. So if you're a new developer, uh, come on board, mobile.org, and there's tons of resources available that, that, uh, that you can quickly come to speed. If, especially if you're an application developer, mm -hmm. there's actually a lot of resources that they're bringing to bear as well. Uh, for the application developers, we really have the, 
the, the core set of functionalities and the core APIs that we're defining as part of all that, mm -hmm. that helps you to develop the applications quicker. Okay. So we're doing actually at least a couple of things. One is to make sure that you can bring your applications from the desktop to the MIDs okay. uh, in a more seamless fashion mm -hmm. because Linux is Linux. Right, right. And you should be able to... So there's not a loss through. of functionality, just Correct. transferring from one you, you definitely need to do a, a good bit of work around um, UI optimizations because what looks uh, good on a desktop doesn't look quite that good on a small screen. Mm -hmm. So you do, need to, you do need to do that. But you can bring a lot uh, of, of, the, of the same core functionality from the desktop. Uh, and the second thing we're doing very consciously is to make sure that you as an application developer can reap the benefit of the investment and not have to double or triple the investment when you go from an OSV plugin as well. So if you, if you have this mobile compliance program where uh, you really are writing to mobile uh, and you're able to kind of leverage that uh, and, uh, no matter what the OEM chooses as an OSV vehicle to go to market. Uh, and that's a compelling value that we're bringing. Great. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us today. Thanks, Kelly. All right. Yep, see you around. That's it. Anything else?